All right, traders, welcome to the midday video. Uh, the first video I, I put together did not record, so um, I will do it again and um, I'll try to do it very quickly. So um, <clears throat> I want to summarize a couple of things um, for you guys. Um, of course, the the um, the CPI report came out this morning, right? <clears throat> My goal, whenever one of these reports comes out, especially something like this where everybody's watching, is to see if there's any change in trend um, that is basically happening in some of the macro areas, interest rates, uh, currencies, right? And then, of course, to look at the index, you know, and how that translates into what the equity indices are doing, right? If there's any major resistance nearby, or, you know, um, find some takeaways, you know, the breadth as well, right? That's going to give us some clues, right? We're looking to see if really anything has changed, okay? So, of course, uh, you know, the my analysis is, we're, I'm not going to analyze components of the CPI report and tell you, oh my God, it's, you know, the, the, the you know, this isn't right, the, you know, there, there's, there's, inf there's too much inflation, there's less inflation, you know, or the, comp what's driving the inflation, right? Let them, like the macro analysts do that. What my job is to do is to see if really what has changed. Has anything really changed? Has anything materially changed where I have to make decisions based on what I'm doing, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is um, you know, I'm going to look at the Fed fund futures, right? What are the Fed fund futures doing? Have they really changed? Um, what have you know? What has been the trend that's been taking place? Well, um, again, so Fed fund futures are the overnight interest rate, the short term interest rate. Uh, there's two things that I would point out here. Uh, the incremental rate for the next couple Fed meetings, the next one's going to be 322. Nothing's really changed here. There's going to be most likely 25 basis points is the next um, for the next meeting. That's what the market is pricing in. Of course, any all of this is subject to change as new information comes out. But right now, this is not really changed. We're still looking at 25 basis points for the March meeting. What has changed is when you go further out. So May right now is implying basically about another 25 basis points. Again, it's not going to be exact, So, but it's just 0.47. So when you add up to 25, 25, right, we're looking at maybe another 25 basis point hike in uh, for the May 3rd meeting, right? And then there could be another one. We don't know yet, right? This is kind of, under, you know, not determined because it moves up about, uh, what, 15 basis points from there, right? It also helps to look at this implied, the overall implied interest rate. Like right now, based on, you know, what the Fed is done so far is brought the interest rate up to 4.58 all right and um uh, you know, and then if you look to see plus those interest rate, uh, you know, implied rate increases for the next meetings, this gets us up to like to top us out around 5.27, right? And that's around July. Now, what has changed? Well, a couple of weeks ago, you know, prior to the last Fed meeting, we were at like a, about 4.89, 4.9. So that has moved up and it's moved up about 30 base, you know, just a little bit under 30 basis points is, is what, um, you know, the change in, in, you know, from where we've heard all these Fed speakers, from when, when we've heard Powell speak, from when this new fresh uh, economic data. All right. So what's concerning? And so again, this is the short end of the curve. When we look at all, you know, upon all maturities, right, across the interest rate curve, you've got the two-year rate, you've got, you know, three, five, seven, ten. Um, so if we look at the short end of the curve, right, that's four, the two-year rate is 4.61, right? So that is almost near the highs of what we've seen in the last year. So if I click on this, right, you're going to see basically, uh, and I, I want to show um, a one-year chart here, but the interest rates are almost as high as they've been. Um, they topped out in November of 2022. Right, let me just make sure I'm recording this because last time I hit record and it, yeah, it says I'm recording. Okay, just double checking. So, so interest rates have gotten, you know, on the front end of the curve have really moved up, right? I keep showing you in the room like the 30, you know, what the 30 year bond is doing because usually that's most sensitive. Um, it's not the most sensitive right now. It's the short end of the curve. However, we could, there's still takeaways from, from looking at either TLT or ZB um, and, and watching basically the path, right? So what I'm watching here is this 128.10, right? So we are beginning to to trend back down again, right? As we've broke the value area um, towards the end of last week. Um, you know, we're still above the highs of what we saw at the end of the year. Um, sideways is fine. If we really start picking up volatility, 
in interest rates, you are going to most likely see the VIX go higher, which is, again, completely odd or different because the VIX doesn't track interest rates. It doesn't track, um, you know, the, the volatility of interest rates, or, you know, bond prices. It tracks what the S&P is doing, right? And the, the implied volatility of 30-day options and the implied volatility. However, one can affect the other one, right? We saw this back when this was happening, right? As interest rates were going higher back here, the VIX was doing the same thing. So they can affect one another, um, even though they're not directly related, right? So that's one of the things that I'm definitely monitoring. Right. Market breadth. That's another thing that I'm monitoring, too. We saw we were under a bearish crossover now for the NYSE, um, NYSE uh, some uh, the NYSE summation index. Same thing with the NASDAQ. Right. Um, you know, that is going to be something that I heavily monitor. Right. We want to, um, you know, basically what that means is that when you've got more declining names versus advancing, right, the wind is in your face. It's harder to be a stock picker because if you pick, you know, let's say you pick 10 random names, right, you could have six or seven of those names that are going down versus going up. Right. We want to see breath. Um, you know, increase. So that's something that we'll have to monitor, right? I like to be a little bit more defensive when we have a bearish crossover. Um, and that kind of gets us to like the concept of renting versus owning names. Renting kind of like is another, uh, something that I kind of refer to more as day trading, right? So you can kind of think about when you're entering names, are you entering, uh, you know, is this a swing trade for you? Or is this, are you just scalping? Right. Um, and your level of conviction could could have to do that. So I, I wanted to give an example from this morning very quickly. AMD, this is a name that you saw me trade. Well, why why did I only day trade this? You can see the VPOC being taken out. Right. I, I like the strength this morning in semis. And I know AMD had good earnings and they've dipped a little bit. So I was just basically looking to um, um basically scalp a little bit, right? So here was my order. Notice I took this thing off um, right at 86, which is very close to the top of value 86.25. So why did I do that? Why was I only looking for, um, a, you know, basically a day trade in this name? I was renting this name for the day. Why? Because it's not a market leader, right? I like to part, I like to, to swing trade, right? So to own names that are market leaders. Is AMD a market leader right now? No, it's not. Um, here's the chart of it. You know, is does it have potential to to bounce further? Sure, absolutely. But it's not a market leader, right? And I'll give you an example of a market leader, right? Take a look at what's going, you know, in the semi space because AMD is a, se a semi name, right? Cadence, right? That's breaking out to new highs. That's a leader. Cirrus, right? That's a market leader, right? That's out to new highs, right? And and what we like to do with market leaders is is buy dips in market leaders, right? When they're kind of coming back into support, right? Um, you know, Nvidia is acting a bit better than that, right? It's it's not at all time highs, but you've got you know a, basically you know a trade that you can kind of think about is if it does break this value area for the week, right? That two nineteen is a level to trade against. Okay, so if you see me trade names that are kind of more sideways, so forth, odds are they're going to be renters. All right, um, you know other areas. So, so I, you know, just to return to the semis, you know, I really like what's going on in the semis. We've seen these names report earnings. You know, there's three or four of them today that are all that are all doing well. I like to you know, of course, take note of that and to participate in that, right? Also take a look at what's going on with the steel names, right? This is a, this is a name that I want to own. Um, this is a name that it dips, right? This was a bit of a bigger dip, but the dip got bought, right? Dip back into the 20 day moving average, it gets bought, dip back into the 20 day moving average, it gets bought. It's breaking out. It's making, you know, in every subsequent time it does that, it's making new highs. That's a name that I want to own. Also, look at this group. ATI is doing a similar thing, right? After taking up both of those VPOX, shallow um, uh, pullback, right? Um, CMC is another name too. And again, you can't own every name right now in this market because we just talked about breadth. And, and you know, um, if we go to the S&P, it, it is not breaking, you know, it is not breaking value. Right. So it is in it is locked inside the value area for the, for the week, um, you know, and right now is we're not breaking down. So I tend to do more stock picking. I'll tend to put on more positions when when I see breath expanding.
All right, a few other areas like um, Picard is a name I just put on too, right? Um, you know, this has to stay above the value area for, for the week, right? But again, look at the, you know, the, um, the move on earnings. It's spent about a, a couple of weeks um, digesting and, and is, uh, you know, trying to move to higher. And, and if it doesn't, right, I, I can kind of, you know, add, um, you know, some risk in here to 7166, right? And, and so on and so forth. Um, but again, you know, that's the difference right now uh, between, you know, owning and, and renting. Um, other names that are that are doing pretty well too, you know, take a name like Toast, right? This is a volatile name. This is going to report earnings this week as well as, um, uh, I think Foursquare is coming up too, right? Those are interesting names, but they're too, you know, for me, uh, you know, they may be beginning to, you know, change the trend and this is breaking, try to break out of this, right? That's something that, um, you know, again, you have to have the conviction level, right? Right now, it, it's still a little bit too loose for me, Um but it's something that I'm watching to see if it can kind of break out of this sideways action, right? And, and earnings will dictate that. All right, I want to keep this video kind of short. There's there's a lot of other movers that are going on. Um, so, you know, again, if it's a name that you have um, conviction in, like right now, I, I have conviction in Boeing. Why do I have conviction in Boeing, right? Because it had good earnings, right? We're also seeing the trend, you know, hearing about the trend in, in some of these areas of the market, you know, um, its rival Airbus, right, was speaking, I think, at a conference today, right, and notice what they're saying in their conference, right, Airbus in discussion with suppliers to ramp up production, Airbus considers boosting wide body production, right, do you think they're doing that because of that they've not, that they're not seeing demand, right? Or do you think that they're doing that because they're, they're trying to, um, you know, to meet the, the, the demand right now, right? So um, they're, they're trying to increase their supply to, um, you know, to, to meet demand. That's a strong thing, right? And that makes me want to be long Boeing, right? When you hear something like that, right? Even though that interest rates are moving up, right? Even though that we keep hearing about, uh, you know, the economy and so forth, right? That's a name that if they're if they're if they're increasing, building more because they see that there's more demand, um, odds are it's it's a pretty good business to be in right now, right? So this is something now you know Boeing does have to get through this uh, 220 VPOC, and that's why I've taken a good chunk of the, my trade off. Um, but that's something that I'll, I'll continue to kind of position in a little bit, right? Um, because we're seeing that the, the trend is very strong. And if you go through some of the aerospace names, like a Spirit Airlines and so forth, right? So that gives me a bit more confidence, right? Again, doesn't, doesn't mean I'm going to be 100% correct, but um, you know, I'm just kind of following along with the trend and, and, and listening um, to, to what's going on right now. And um, you know, that makes me more bullish in this particular area. All right, guys, uh, you know, and the rest of many other areas, right? It's my job to monitor and see when things change, right? I looked at healthcare earlier today, right? XLV made made the change, but you could see it, it, it's okay. Um, do I want to jump right into healthcare and buy a bunch of things? No, I want to kind of see if it can, you know, what what's it doing here? Is it turning the corner? Are we going to see more um, defensive areas start to step to the plate? Well, this is something to kind of pay attention to, right? But it doesn't mean I have to own every area of the market, um, especially with um, the breath situation that I just mentioned. Um, so by the end of the day, I would like to see breath continue to expand. I don't really want to see it weaken. So we'll see how we go. Again, the, the goal when we get new information out is to monitor and make changes based on what the market is telling you, right? Not to be perma. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video and have a good rest of your day.